back in this bitch, uh Know we full attack in this shit, uh You know the full Mac came equipped uh. Yo, 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 what's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the 892 Podcast Where we always keep it 100 And I am your host, Harrison Alright, so thank you for joining me with another episode I am chilling, chilling, chilling And I hope everybody is good Today will be a me episode only, and it's all about me. So I appreciate everybody joining me today on the show. Thank you. Thank you. You are a thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are too kind. You are a beautiful audience with me today. Hope everybody's week went by good. Um, Juneteenth, Father's Day, everything went by pretty swell. Uh, another weekend off. Another everything, like I said, everything went by cool. Uh, Father's Day, chill, did not really do anything for the most part other than, I want to say, parenting. So uh, I, I did exactly what the day was, Juneteenth, ain't really do anything. Um, I feel like we're at that point now where we should just be honest with ourselves as black people. I think, you know, if we're being realistic, I'm going to be realistic with myself. I know Juneteenth from the first time i heard it was on blackish and then i knew more about it after the george floyd incident and that's when i did more research into it to find out that it was uh mainly the easiest answer is black independence day from when all the slaves were officially free for our own independence so um i feel like as black people we need to kind of take some of our fight the power fight the power uh, crusades back some too because not all of us know exactly the importance and the significance of it as some of people do i know a lot of people that were talking about juneteenth before the floyd uh, before the george floyd situation did happen and kudos to them um there are a lot of people that are historians and that were going around preaching the juneteenth and black independence that we did not take it serious until a lot of incidences that were going around that made us take take a little bit more pride in our heritage and taking back ownership of some of our holidays and seeing that it just now became a federal holiday that we did get off and that we did recognize around the country um as black people we need to relax as we sit there and chastise white people for making mistakes on a holiday that we just one got recognized as a national holiday and two we just really just all jumped aboard on a couple years ago for real for real i mean if i'm being like i said if i'm being honest i saw it on blackish and then i so for the first time i was wondering i thought that was like a made-up holiday and then i went on there and i was like well if blackish is doing it it must be something real because dre and uh kenya burris always try to keep you woke on some type of topic even if Dre's being extra on Blackish, stuff that he's always doing, he's always trying to make sure that you have some type of message with it, that it is some type of truth to the struggle of maybe going from a very poor setting to a very affluent setting as you get to your later years and make it show that you do not forget your roots. Um, the reason why it made me think about that, like I said, a lot of stuff comes at work, and that's kind of what makes this parallel good to Blackish is. Um, I was at work, so one of the people asked what was one of the, my white coworkers asked what was Juneteenth, and so I just said it was Black Independence Day, and some of the other coworkers were just kind of like, "You don't know," and as a white coworker, I don't expect her to know something that just became a federal holiday for everybody two years ago. So I'm sorry, it became a federal holiday for her last year. Um, so it wasn't for me to be jumping down her throat. I remember last year, one of the white people I work with asked, how do you celebrate it? And I didn't really have an answer for that. Um, realistically, if we being honest, I mean, if it's Black Independence Day, how is a white person going to celebrate Independence Day? I mean, you saw what Black Independence Day, at least you saw what Walmart tried to do, give us red velvet cake, German chocolate cake, all in one type of ice cream flavor and put a Kuna Matata on some ice cream and sell it to us. So i see that it is a learning curve for everybody but for us to just sit there and act all indignant as if we everyone and when i say everyone i'm not saying there aren't black people that don't know the significance of it 
but everyone just act like we're all on code with Juneteenth as if four years ago we weren't just celebrating Fourth of July. It's crazy. And also to act like I'm not going to celebrate and barbecue or get fireworks on the day that I'm going to be off anyway is crazy too. So let's not act like all of a sudden as well, black people, we just going to give up a free day. So you mean to tell me for the day that we're going to be off on 4th of July, is y'all going to work too? Because I've also noticed that from a lot of people as well. Are we going to sit there and say now that we're celebrating Juneteenth, are we going to sit there and just give up uh, another free day that is July 4th for Independence Day for white folks? Because I do know that they double dipping for Juneteenth. So I just want to know for all these indignant and so righteous black people now, all of a sudden, are y'all about to stop doing uh, July 4th for for they, for they for their independence now? Because all of a sudden, you know, you got to fight the power for ours. So let's not call a spade a spade. Um, I'm sorry, let's call a spade a spade. Let's, let's, let's not all of a sudden be too good for one and all of a sudden act like we weren't just sitting there having firework parties our entire lives. I'm not saying that it was right that we had that we were celebrating the independence that we weren't free for. It's not that. It's the same with not knowing about the Tulsa massacres from certain points because it wasn't taught to us. We should have went out there and know, but if we didn't have the education taught to us um, by our, our parents, however, the same with the Philly bombing, same with a lot of things in African American culture that we weren't taught um, or we did not have the knowledge of a word privy to. We did we know now we can just be better going forward um let's not just let's not just switch up and act it just erase what we were doing around that time i think that what you do with the knowledge now is what's the most important part of the whole juneteenth holiday i think that if you do show the importance and make sure that you teach the next generation the importance of juneteenth then that's what you need to do and for the most part i mean you're going to be off on summer anyway so I'm not going to work on July 4th and I'm not about to sit there and act like I'm not about to do nothing and I'm not about to crash nobody party and get some free motherfucking food. So why I sit there and act like I'm going to go around and not enjoy and get some free goddamn barbecue and play and fuck up somebody's thousand dollar fireworks. That is the American motherfucking dream. They came over and stole land. I'm stealing food and I'm stealing fireworks. That is the ultimate way that you pay somebody back for robbery. You rob they ass back. Mask on, fucking mask on, in the words of the future. I think that is the best way to go about that. Um, I don't see any way about it. I just I just find it, like I said, I, I think the George Floyd year, that was probably everybody was on high alert. So, you know, everybody's talking about Juneteenth and why we should celebrate 4th of July. And... I think that was just kind of more of us to kind of wake up and get more invested in our history. And I had just kind of seen what it coming up now that we know about Juneteenth and it's been sanctioned for us. We just needed to, you know, just kind of do a better job and just kind of realize that um, we have to like just go about it and know that like it's still a it's still a journey that we have to go on to get to where we need to be you know and we aren't all the way there and it's the process that we have to go on as a society in general if we're being honest with ourselves i mean we still have a ways to go if we're going to make any progress for the next generation of people we have ways to go as far as getting legislations as far as getting these bad cops out here that are slaying black people that are going around not protecting children in schools you know these gun uh these gun laws that are terrible right now so many things that do not benefit us as um black people we need to go around our history that's not being taught in school that you're getting um that you're getting shunned from that you're making legislations to make privy that you're not privy to our, our children are not privy to like we need to make sure that we are taking this snowball and letting it go all the way down to the mountain until the ball is a fucking crater the size of an asteroid and there's no stopping it and it's just filled with information and culture and it's no stopping 
what we can do or what we're going to do that is going to put us in the forefront of where we're going to go. And I think that's what we that's what we ultimately need to do with this whole Juneteenth stance. We don't need to just make it a mockery or we don't need to make it a I don't know. We don't need to make it a spectacle. I think that's what I yeah, we don't need to make it a spectacle. And I want to make sure that's what you know we take out of this. We don't need to use it as a a way to divide everything because we all don't know the importance of it all to just sit there and be like this is ours this is because we ain't really got no way of justifying and keeping white folks out of it because we we couldn't do shit to them until they signed the bill for it anyway so what we need to do is we got to keep the ball rolling and just use this as a stepping stone to put more of our history and more of our culture and more of our um heritage on paper on laws or legislations that they can't take away so you know that's my spill on that that's you know that is just how i was just thinking about this uh, whole juneteenth holiday uh, as far as father's day i mean i tell you all the time it ain't you know shit as far as a a stance on like you know how i feel like how to go about it it's just i don't know you just see the same thing like it's every year you can walk into a restaurant the waitress or hostess may look up at you. You don't have to make a reservation for the restaurant. Hopefully, you don't have to make your own reservations for Father's Day, which is always some bullshit. Um, or if you are, um, I'm sorry, hopefully, um, you're not stuck in a grill. So I, I've said that part wrong. So on your cooking for your own meal, um, <laughs> you walk in the restaurant, see, I'm here for Father's Day. Uh, do I need to make a reservation? The waitress will look at you. No, you probably just sit wherever you want to. Um, I was looking at something that was like what, for Father's Day. You know, they give you a screwdriver, a uh, tool set, something. Go fix some shit, nigga. And then for the mom, it's like a ring, a necklace. Every kiss begins with K. Like, dang, I want to be fine jeweled and everything. Like, the just the whole approach is just just you're you're heralded as a mother and you are just looked at as i don't know you're treated as if you're held to like if you're there as a father in the life just go handle some shit like they treat you like as father's day shows that they already barely expect you to be there so they don't really go and do too much for you because what's the point of doing something and having what's the point of putting a high expectation on you and you may not be there so in reality we give you something bare minimal like a tie or some draws or some tool sets because if you keep it bare minimal light then if you let it down i mean well hell anybody can just pick up a hammer and do that but with the mom you'll never lose your mom you know your mom is this and that like the bar sits so high and it's 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 kind of like i don't know it's how the, the, the holiday is set up how they view moms henceforth like a lot of times you'll see people say or you know you've seen women come online and be like i might as well say happy mother father's day to myself because i do both of them so i'm not here for that whole debate but father's day was cool nothing too much i mean i got my texts and my calls and everything so everybody that did say it, i appreciate it um yeah so it was that nothing too much like i said i just chill uh warriors did one in a six like i called it only would have liked to won a game seven because uh we are now at that point of the year where there is nothing on uh steph did get his finals mvp like i did say and i am so with the warriors talking that shit. i mean I I mean nobody picked them. Nobody picked them at the beginning of the year. Everybody said they were done. And they're talking their shit now. So who is anybody to sit there and have an opinion on them? They said they were never going to get anywhere without KD. They said Clay would never come back. They said Steph really couldn't do anything. They really never gave him credit for anything the team in general after that 73 and 9 win season where they lost to LeBron. They just 
discredited them all. And after, like I said, after Kevin Durant left, they said they would never get back to another finals again. So after that, I mean, you win it all. Talk your shit, bro. Like, talk it. There's nothing that nobody can say you. I am here for the Draymond Green shit talking tour. You know, I have no problem with it at all. I think that if Draymond wants to go around talking to everybody that has something to say, Draymond, you do what you need to do, brother. I think everybody had their time talking or counting y'all out, saying y'all had a 0% chance at the beginning of the year. And shit, shut them up. You know what I'm saying? When it came down to load it up, who had a full clip at the end? Golden State. Um, I was very impressed with the series. I skip is probably the funniest one out of all the people I watch just because I, I, I don't I don't know what clutch is when I'm watching sports. I'm watching sports and I'm sitting here like, what about the fourth quarter and somebody making a three pointer have to do with somebody averaging 30 plus points and they getting and they're tiring out because they're the only reason the team has a shot in the fourth quarter. Okay, so I'm not hitting three pointers, but I'm making I'm taking this person off the dribble. They're double teaming me. And I'm I have the hardest matchups. And I'm not hitting a three pointer, but I'm making my free throws. I'm getting the people open to make their shots. I'm setting my team up in positions for them to score. And then I'm making the free throws to close the game out. I'm making the two pointers, the layups and everything. I'm getting into the hole. And now people like Skip and all of them are making assessments on how I um how I'm closing out how I'm not making any threes and people are really doing that and the same with Draymond Draymond can talk his shit because look how everybody said his game was weak he's doing all this extra um shenanigans because he doesn't have his athletic ability and he single-handedly quietly as it's kept went back to Draymond and was one of the anchors for why they won this whole thing and people were doing small stuff like trying to discredit Steph off of Wiggins. Wiggins did great locking down Tatum, but you Wiggins did what he was able to do because you were putting so much pressure on Steph. You don't game plan for Wiggins like you do Steph. You're not catching Wiggins at the halfway point. I mean, Wiggins was doing good once Wiggins, who was athletic as hell, decided to put the ball down and take it to the rim. Go dunk the damn ball. Stop shooting threes like you are Steph Curry. You're not Wardell. You are Wiggins, all right? Wiggle your ass to the rim and take that type of pressure. Like, you know, you are athletically a very good player. You were the number one draft pick. Go out there and show those abilities, and you see what type of difference it made. Boston's biggest threat to y'all was the fact that they had a lot of ISO players that could go out there and get you a lot of points. And Al Horford was out there playing like Rasheed Wallace and Kevin Garnett reincarnated. And y'all just could not get a solid second score. But as the games kind of went down, that ISO stuff kind of went away because they actually had people who could actually score. So like I said, Draymond, talk your stuff. Because when you weren't doing good, they was on your ass. So you talk that stuff. They said y'all weren't going to do shit. Warriors wanted in six. I called it. I would have wanted seven, so I could have had an extra day. But I knew y'all was going to win. And Memphis, you knew I was rooting for y'all. I still think if Ja would have not been hurt, I think y'all could have won it. But do not make yourselves villains because y'all want to go talk shit now. Uh, since y'all want to be going back and forth with the Warriors. The Warriors got four rings. Y'all don't. It's, it's, it's plain and simple like that. Like, they have four rings, eight finals appearances, four in eight years. Y'all have none. Y'all won one series. Y'all beat them in the playoffs. Like, it's not a fair – it's not even a competition at that point. Like, it's this whole we got real estate and clay head. They kept tabs on everybody from a year or two ago. Like, don't be the – don't ruin a good product when just being a last word type of person i get it you don't want to you want to get that bark back 
but you get in the last word when you haven't get in the last word is one thing to like minnesota somebody uh cat or portland or you know new orleans pelican getting the last word to the team that just won the championship and the team that's won four championships and then they won two championships without a super team and then they you know you can count the four with kd but then one two one under teams uh they also had the record with the three of them together as the uh, best record of all time like come on bro like don't don't be those guys you know you just seem like you just chirping the chirp and it's kind of like you it's just it just doesn't look good and you want to be dogs you just don't want to seem like you just talking to talk you know it's like don't be those guys because y'all built up a good name for yourselves as dogs and you don't want people to just look at y'all as there go those memphis people because they already got a bad name for memphis because it's memphis so don't make them basically don't make them call y'all ghetto they already it's like it, they light skin niggas and all that minus draymond and then y'all rough rugged niggas from memphis you know what it is from memphis got it off everybody don't give them a reason to call these ghetto ass niggas from memphis don't let them label y'all so y'all go out there and do your game bring them up tell them run it back you know what i'm saying run the table we gonna run that shit again you know let them see up on the court don't know do no more talking you know so like ti said Ain't no more talking, you know. Run it back next year. We're gonna see him. We did get a surprise from the man himself, Aubrey Drake Graham. He decided to bless everybody. Thank you, Aubrey, for dropping. Honestly, never mind. Yes, the album of the year. And I wanted to take this time to play in a snippet from one of my favorite tracks off the album. <laughs> That's right, baby. Pootie did it again. That ass gas himself. You heard it. Yes. That is official tracks from Honestly Never Mind. You right. Let's go ahead and give it what we think for that album himself. Go ahead and y'all tell me what you think of that album. <coughs> y'all thought so too. So yes, um, as I got hype for that album to drop at midnight, I stayed up. I can honestly say that I have never downloaded and then deleted a Drake album so fast in my life. Yes, that had to be as gas times a thousand. Yes, I know people are surprised to hear me say that. I repeatedly say I am a Drake distributor. I'm a Aubrey arbitrator. All right. I am a Jimmy. I don't even know where that goes from. I am a I don't know but all i know is when it comes to drake i will ride for that nigga. i will defend him for anybody but i have to be real that shit suck when is anybody knows me and we gonna say eight more than 92 all right if i'm gonna keep it 100 that shit sucked and i just i ain't gonna say it sucked because i did not listen to it but i do know this the same with kendrick i came up here and said that ain't what i want to hear all right same with Cole. That ain't what I want to hear. Drake. Brrr, your ass has fell into that line. A lot of people, from what I hear, as the thing has come down, because Beyonce doing the same thing, this is a dance hit. Some people want to dance. That is not what I want to listen to right now. I'm not sitting there saying that this album is some garbage because I did not listen to the album. I did not want to hear a dance track so for that right there that gets ass gas from me how is it doing number one dance record from the apple whatever it's gonna do numbers and the words of jacoby's is going i mean in the words of jacoby is gonna do numbers because it's drake that's fine if this is what drake wants to do that is fine wayne did the same thing with the rock album it's the same as what he did for more life i know a lot of people are sitting here over acting like i put out the the um the statement for this coming out i didn't know this was coming out i didn't get this this album earlier before anybody i love the rapping and the mixing of uh the 
Drake when he puts out stuff. But I'm not going to sit here and act like the nigga didn't just give me CLB, which I thought was a classic. So I'm not going to say be greedy when the nigga drops uh, scary hours and he gives me a plethora of stuff. This ain't Kendrick. This ain't J. Cole where I get once every three to four years. Or if you do it by Draymond's count, every time they win a championship, every two, three years, that's when he drop an album. So I'm not about to sit here and act like I don't get blessed with enough. This just wasn't for me. This goes in the ass, gas, trash album. I'm not going to listen. I'm not trying to be sitting on no dance tracks. And this just wasn't for me. This goes. This is not one of them classics. This is what he want to do. It's all beans by him. CLB falls in a classic for me. And we'll move right on from there. So I had to just give my verdict. I know a couple people were eagerly waiting to hear what I had to put out on that. Did not feel it. Was not going for it. Got no spins other than the initial three minutes that it's three, four minutes that it stayed on my phone. And then we moved on. And just like that, we're moving on. Let's get that shit the fuck up out of here. So um, also wanted to, let's see. I did notice um, Quinta, uh, I think this is her name, Quinta, the girl who makes Abbott Elementary. I don't know her last name. I know it's uh, Quinta. Um, found out she was married to a white man. So I have f- figured this out. I-, I talked about this a couple weeks ago when we were talking about um, interracial, interracial relationships. Um, I had to swing it back. I only came back to this because I did want to add this. Um, it is something that I do notice as much as I have said that I would prefer for somebody to be with someone of the same race, because I do feel like it is easier to be with somebody of your own race. I do need to also be fair and be on both. Like if I'm going to be fair, like if I'm going to put all of it on the to say that it is easier to be with somebody of your own race. I do need to hold us as black people accountable that there are people that want to be with us of our own race and they do get shunned by our own race or looked at us as weird or lame or outsiders until they get to a certain point of notoriety. And then that's when they're seen, i.e. Jordan Peele, maybe. I know definitely Amari Hardrick. I know, uh, Whatever his name is, I don't know his real name, um, something Ellis, but I do know, uh, what's his name, um, from Insecure, I can't think of his name, um, uh, what is his name, what is his name, what is his name, Issa did him wrong, I get it all the time, but her, um, Quinta from Abbott Elementary, um, Lawrence, Lawrence, all of them are with white women, and even Michael B. Jordan, until he got with Lori Harvey, which they broke up, a lot of them at times, or you see them there with white women. Uh, Michael Coulter, Luke Cage, these little white women. And a lot of times, if you hear their stories going like early on, they were with white women because when they did try to get with black women, they were called lame or weird, and they gravitated to who found who saw them for them and i did want to put out that it it is important for you to be with somebody i do think it is i find it important for my purpose to be with somebody who is of your own national race because it is important to pass your culture makes it easier but i also do feel that as black people that part of trying to fit in or trying to be cool don't find somebody when they're on their rise and be like, yes. And when you see what they do, like a Issa, like a Amari, like a Lawrence, like a Quinta, and you see them doing stuff like Insecure, Abbott Elementary, and you see that they've been woke or always been in tune with our culture. And then you see, or what's the girl from uh, Queen of Slim? She was married to a white man. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, from Power the mom uh 50 cents mom anyway i'm just adding that part to it you see all these people and they're with men of the opposite race or women of the opposite race and that and you see them and at the time when you're seeing whatever they're doing creatively you see they are with the culture this whole time and they've been like that but we've shunned them from a certain point because at whenever they were at their 
peak or, or coming up or whatever, not peak, but when they were coming up, we shun them. And we need to do a better job of accepting when we're weird, when we're coming up. Because just when somebody's cool, don't mean they're going to end up cool. They get lame as fuck when they get older. You know, um, I think when I was talking to Mike Floss and all those guys, they were so comfortable with themselves. I think that's probably one of the coolest things about the Josh Blacks and the Jamels and the Ericas and everybody. They're so comfortable with themselves. And that's probably like an envious thing that a lot of that's so envious to me if, when I was younger that because I flip flop and I am who I am now. I'm not envious of it now because um, I'm envious of it that I could not have trusted myself to stay that way that I am now my entire life that I gave in so much. And I appreciate them, those type of people that they stuck the they stayed course to who they were and never cared about what other people deemed as cool um and i say to us as black people we do so much finger pointing and shunning and telling somebody or judging their blackness on what we gauge is real instead of teaching them we make fun of it and then when they get to a certain point instead of investigating or seeing what they actually do know and then once they hit their pinnacle they was woke the whole time and then when they do something to put the culture on and then we see who was riding with them and it'd be somebody of opposite race we want to point the finger and be like yo what the fuck and then i see somebody with like quinta or jordan peele or amari hardrick or the wife from uh uh i'm sorry the canaan mama from power or anybody of opposite race and i don't even get mad at that because you was with them when they was quote unquote lame and you rode with them for all these lame years when they didn't have you know anything or any type and they and not only did you ride with them they stayed in touch with the culture and didn't let just getting with somebody of uh opposite race take them away from getting the message out to who their people was or who their identity was they probably even used that leverage to put them in positions maybe to get their message out to a broader audience because of the connections of dating somebody of an opposite race i'm just saying you never know but is is they still were who they were even outside of their realm or their culture their hood they took that and used that avenue to bring the light back home. And I just think that we do a bad job sometimes of not championing the weird people, quote unquote weird people, because they're not weird. They're just different. And I think that part of culture is not always doing what's cool. Part of culture is, and Mike Claw said this, it's what some society or somebody deems cool. And our culture, black is cool whatever we do is cool whether that's somebody doing science fiction horror somebody practicing or playing in capes and magic whatever we do is cool and we need to highlight that and stop pointing the fingers and not only glorifying just sports drugs um mafia everything that's just violence and those and um gangs and all the rap and all that music just we need to gl glorify it all so when we're doing that culture, we feel at home. We don't feel out of out of place. You know, even somebody having money or being on the upper side, you know, you call them bougie, you're not in touch, or you're not really black because you speak a certain type of way vernacular. That's so stupid because I talk proper or because I changed my tone and things. Oh, I don't know. I'm not this or I'm not that. You know, oh, I haven't seen this black movie. Well, show them the fucking movie. Don't tell them they're not in touch with their roots because they haven't seen the fucking movie. Just show them. Don't make them feel like an outsider. Take their black card because a nigga don't a nigga ain't never had Kool-Aid. Just make them the fucking Kool-Aid. You know what I'm saying? Or don't highlight the worst parts of being black. That's getting robbed, being poor. And just and when I say that, meaning like 
when I say like getting robbed, being poor, like when I mean that, like saying like you have to do this or you have to do that, like, like don't. And if that hasn't happened to you, you ain't black enough. Like, like let the experience in general, like that, don't gauge it like that. You know what I'm saying? We push each other off too much. So I just want to see that I, I had to bring that part back because I feel we push our we push our own out. And sometimes, you know, there are now there are uh, there's some niggas that go out there and do some weird shit. I ain't gonna sit there and act like they ain't, you know, some niggas that go pull some cool shit. So they ain't all of us. But for the ones that aren't, you know, that the ones that that do are of other not go with other races that still keep in touch and bring it back home. Let's not always make them outsiders when they've been wanting to be a part of us the whole time. You get what I'm saying? So that was, uh, that was, um, that's one of the things I want to touch on. Um, don't really care about the Airbnbs too much. Did want to talk about these. Um, and we'll wrap, I'll wrap it right here and I'll go. Um, I have thought I was, a uh, the petty King, petty La Pew, petty Pendergrass. And I feel that I found that it is a level of petty that I have nowhere near. And I will tell you all exactly the level that I'm at. Um, it is new heights and bounds that I feel that I still need to reach. And I, I feel like I am on my way and I need to learn it. I promise you guys that I will work on it even harder. I need to get to elephant level petty. Yes, I, you heard me right. I am not at my super sand level of petty until I reach elephant. That is the level of petty that I need to ascend to. Super Saiyan elephant level petty. And people are wondering what that is. Well, there is an elephant. I want to say it's in Africa or wherever it's at. That trampled a woman because this woman helped poachers kill her uh, its baby elephant. I don't know if it was a daughter or a son. This elephant went, found this woman and trampled her after this elephant killed this woman this woman was taken by her family and had a funeral the funeral was a nice sunday uh service maybe on a thursday friday it was gathered by all of her closest friends put in a casket wonderful service i think it was sung by bb and cc wyans i don't know as they were getting ready to do the second collection plate done by the by the um the deacons that same elephant was seen coming through and said bitch i ain't done yet and trampled the service and trampled the casket with the woman in it again and said run up get done up in heaven and hell i'm stumping your ass again not only did she do that, she stampled and trampled the whole funeral. Yes, the whole funeral. Let me repeat this. The woman got trampled by the elephant for killing her baby, is dead, had a funeral. The same elephant came back and trampled her ass. She's dead in her casket at the funeral seven days later if you think this is bad three days later wherever her family was at she trampled her crib at oh this, she brought the block she said shit is not over i'm talking about i need this level of petty she said bitch you thought you was gonna get away with this you thought everybody gonna see me she said everybody gonna see dumbo all right you said you thought you thought dumbo was bad wait till you see boo boo and the fools huh you thought you was gonna come see me huh you tusk with the right one huh all right i'm talking about i thought i was petty i done put some petty shit in motion before you know what i mean i have done some of the most pettiest shit in the block and i still ain't done no shit like that i mean to tell you i'm talking about i'm so pet like you, that shit john mccain did when he said you telling trump he can't come to his funeral oh yes Petty, like as in, it's a third grade teacher, Miss Alt. She told me I was funky 
in the third grade. This is how I knew I needed deodorant. Instead of pulling me to the side and say, James, you need deodorant. Oh, um, it's getting that little time of pulling me, whatever. She said, whoo, golly, you stink. Man. And not only did she tell me in the third grade when I was eight, she told my sixth grade teacher, not only was I bad, she said, and she stunk so bad. I'm talking about I have been waiting for her to drop, be gone, so I could go to her funeral myself and be like, ain't God good. I was going to drop a thing of degree instead of flowers in her casket. And I thought, I, this is the eighth grade, people. And I thought I was petty. No, this, this was the pettiest. Yes, yes. This is even another pettiest. My cousin hit me when I was five. Lamont, yes, I know you're listening to this. I was five years old. I trained to whoop his ass until I was 18 years old to have about, he was 20 years older than me. Petty. Yes. Petty. I am not elephant petty. And I see that there are levels that I need to be. So I'm not living my best life until I get to the point that I'm stumping niggas out past the casket. And I know that I will not be my best self until I get to elephant level petty. So, Miss Alt, just know that throwing a thing of degree in your casket when you go is not enough. You hear me? As they're lowering it, I need to make sure that they are lowering it on a bed of degree. I'm talking about the whole thing need to be out there. Air freshness on. You know what I'm saying? I need to step it up. Lamont and me are good, so I don't need to really fight him anymore. I love you. Solo, you're good on that one. It's some other ones on here right now that we're recording. I can't think of all the other pettiest shit that I've done. But just know that I am on elephant level petty for the rest of my life. It is some niggas out here that just know for sure I am going petty level elephant. If it ain't if it ain't coming catching you at your funeral and stumping your shit out after I already killed you, oh, just know that it ain't over. It's on site. It is on site. So uh, last one, um, saw the Martin episode anniversary. Um, already had this, so it's kind of worked out. Uh, definitely loved how they did everything. Definitely probably my favorite reunion special. I feel like just like the new edition story, I feel like if you're going to do a biography on anybody, BT handled it correctly with new edition and Bobby Brown. I feel like they made a whole bunch of new fans. I feel like the same with that is the same with the Martin reunion special um i feel like martin is probably the most humbling iconic legend out of anybody i just feel like he just does not know what impact that he has like on generations on generations on generations martin was probably like the first show that i watch that has such an impact on what i do as far as like how uh comedy is like my favorite genre of anything martin has probably three of the top movie is in three of my top movies of all time boomerang bad boys and house party so um he's martin is my favorite show of all time martin is one of my favorite comedians of all time martin is probably one of the few people that if i ever saw i would tear up if i ever seen him uh that man is just hilarious to me i think when i watched that show the style that he had the comedy that he had this this the dressing the confidence that he had he wasn't afraid of anybody he he just revolutionized everything as far as what you see today uh, a lot of people even now like when they try to do shows you see so much of the martin show in it it was just fearless i just don't think that a lot of people just realize how much that show did for them and that show did for me just in general i, I just think that it was just a pinnacle i don't care what anybody says whatever they want to say about it this is me I love that show to death. Um, the, the reunion was great. Put on so many people, had so many guests. Did such a great. It was just funny. I don't even think you'll see a show where the the back and forth was so just delivery after delivery after delivery, so organic. Just people laughing on the scenes, on the show. Uh, like just trying not to laugh during takes. The new Jack 
City episode. You said you fought all ass before I uh before I make change. The dog instance, and then just seeing like what was not known and bruh man and just it was just great. And the 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 send off to Tommy, I like that. Atheon, I'm glad he didn't come in there and do too much. It was just great. I love how they give Martin flowers and he just casually accepts them as if he doesn't know what he's done to my generation, the generation after the generation before. He doesn't know what he'd done to uh, sitcom TV. I just thought it was really good. Um, I'm glad I watched it. Glad I got on BT, uh, whatever the app is, BT Plus. Um, definitely canceled that subscription as soon as it was over. But uh, yeah, it was great, man. Uh, like I said, overall, it was a good week. Since the last time I record, everything was good. Um, like I said, I got a lot out. Uh, I think I can wrap it pretty much here. Um, like I said, everything was good. I hope everybody had a good week. Hope all the fathers out there had a good week. Man, I hope everybody can get on that level of petty because it is all for your ass. You better hope you ain't do shit to me wrong. I am so... Mm, you are so lucky. People better be lucky. I could not think of no petty shit to happen because I will put it on here right now. Miss Alt, Miss Alt, count your fucking days. Count your fucking days. All right, because I'm going to be at that funeral. I have been waiting for that. I don't care what anybody has to say. You have been in my what they say. What they say. Been living in my head rent free. I have not forgotten that day. And when I say I have the memory of an elephant, yes, I have the memory of a elephant. I remember that day in class you was teaching me about division i remember the problem like it was nothing nigga yes same way i remember miss tammy was the best bus driver we ever had and she used to go over the speed bumps on purpose so we could fly over the speed um over the seats and we'd be flying in the air because she was the coolest so yes um Everybody, I appreciate y'all for hanging with me this week. If y'all got any questions or anything y'all want me to talk about, just hit me up at the 8 more than 92 podcast at gmail.com. If y'all got uh, any, or if y'all want to pop up on the show, just do the same or DM me at the, what is it? I've said this like every week, and for some odd reason, I can never remember the podcast. 8MT92 underscore podcast. That's the Instagram. So if y'all want to just DM me or whatever. We can let this thing roll. Other than that, uh, make sure y'all hit the shop five page. Y'all want any of the merch? Blase, blase, blase. This has been another episode of the 8192 podcast where we always keep 100 with y'all. I'm gonna holler at y'all later. Peace. Attacking this bitch, uh, know we full attacking this shit, uh, you know the full Mac came equipped, uh.